I want to thank uh, all the brass ensemble this morning. I so appreciate that. I may, yeah, let's give them a hand. As a trumpet player, I may have a slight brass bias, but that was amazing. And uh, what a way to start the day uh, in worship. Uh, it is last chapel for me for the summer. I know it is for several of you as well, which is a, a lot of mixed feelings. Um, um, looking forward to, uh, to what God's going to do today, though. And I'm grateful for the day that he's given. I want to uh, just take a moment to, first of all, I want to thank you uh, just for the privilege of sharing this week. And for many of you, uh, these last two weeks together, uh, it's been a, a, an incredible joy to get to know some of you a little bit better. And just to share in what God is doing, uh, I am so uh, just thankful and grateful to the Lord uh, for the opportunity to get to be part of this ministry. And so thank you. I want to also encourage you to thank some people before you leave, whether it's today or whether it is next week or if they are leaving. Right? There is a lot that goes in to making Chehi happen. And especially this year, right, with all the uncertainty and the things that we were dealing with. So I just want to uh, encourage you to thank our directors, Mr. Bergen, Mr. Harry, Ms. Holland. Right? We're so, they have put in more work, hours, and thought and prayer and tears into this season than you can imagine uh, because they wanted camp to be as amazing as possible for you guys. So make sure you thank them and then make sure you thank your faculty. Right? They come here because they love and care about you and they want to pour into your lives. They want to stretch you and help you grow, not just in your music, but as a person and in your walk with God and your counselors, right? Anybody grateful for your counselor? All right. They put a lot of energy to keep you well and alive and where you're supposed to be, uh, but they don't just care about those things. They care deeply about who you are and about God's work in your life. So I just want to say thank you to all of those, those people and as well as our office staff, right, and our support staff, right, because they do so much to keep this ministry functioning. So thank you. Um, thank you so much. We're going to wrap up our, our journey with Moses this morning. We're going to be in Exodus chapter 18. So if you have your Bible, uh, you can turn there. As I've shared with you this week, and for those of you who were here last week, that I believe with everything within me that God has put a call on your life. And we said that that call begins with the gospel, the good news, that although we are sinful people and sin by its nature separates us from a God who is holy. We just sang about his holiness, his purity, right? That, that nothing that is sinful can approach or be in the presence of such holiness without it being destroyed, right? That, that in our sinfulness, in it, we could not approach God, right? Because, because of who he is, right? Our sinfulness would, would cause us to be destroyed because God is so pure and so perfect. And yet God chose to send his son to be a sacrifice for our sins, for your sins, for the sins of the whole world. And he absorbed the judgment and the curse and the consequence and the wrath of sin in himself. And he paid the penalty as a human, but he was also God himself in human flesh and so as God he could pay infinitely for the sins of humanity and he can apply his forgiveness to anyone and everyone who comes to him by faith and so I believe God has put a call on your life to know him and he has made the way for you to know him and he invites you to respond in faith and in belief and in trust and it's my hope and prayer that every one of you would come to a place where you understand and know that there's a God who loves you who gave his son for you and so I want, to, I want to encourage you to respond to that call. But he's not just called you to be forgiven. He's called you to know him relationally. He's called you to, to, to worship him. He's called you to use your life to honor and glorify him and to serve him. And I believe he's put a specific call on your life. And I want to, I want to invite you to, to just to continue to seek that call. right? And say, God, what is it that you're calling me to do? And God won't always show you everything. right? Isn't that his grace? Right? Because we can't always... It would be too much. But he will show you the steps that he wants you to take. The next thing that he's calling you to do. And I want to encourage you to do that. And today I, I want to talk about something that is crucial on our journey of following God. And it's something that sometimes we resist. And it's something that sometimes we push back on. And especially when we're younger, we can really push back on this because... There comes a point in our life where we think that we know what? 
Somebody help me out. Everything. everything. All right, some of you might know everything, right? Or at least you think you do. But there will come a point in life where you have to realize, that we all have to realize, is that I don't know everything. And because of that, I need to be willing to listen to wise advice. And today we're going to see that Moses, right, and he has grown tremendously as we followed his journey, right? He has overcome insecurities. He has overcome his doubts and his fears. He's gone on this up and down journey of trusting God and struggling and being faithful and wrestling with leading such a difficult people. But today we're going to see that even though Moses has grown and even though he trusts God and God is with him, he still needed to listen to advice. And it's going to come from his father-in-law. And so I, I want us to consider what God might have us to say about listening to advice because refusing to listen to advice is a sure way to bring unnecessary sorrow and suffering into your life. Let, let me say that again. Refusing to listen to wise advice is a sure way to bring unnecessary sorrow and suffering into your life. Listen, there's difficulties that will come into our life, but sometimes we have difficulties Sometimes we go through painful experiences because we didn't listen, right? And we refuse to listen to why. And, you know, there's a lot of things. Sometimes it's pride. Sometimes it's ego. Sometimes it's stubbornness. Any stubborn people here, right? A few of you, all right. Several hands raised. Right, sometimes it's just hard and, and we push back. I know that own tendency in my life. But listen to Proverbs 12, 5. It's on the screen before we get to Exodus 18. Solomon says, the way of a fool, or the way of fools, seems right to them. But the wise listen to advice. Right? It's a fool who thinks, I know everything, and I know everything that I should do. I don't need to be told anything, because I'm the source of truth. I'm the source of all wisdom. But that's not true. And so he says, the wise listen to advice. So, Exodus chapter 18, and it says in Exodus chapter 18, and we're going to kind of summarize a little bit of the beginning of the chapter and then look a little bit more specifically at a few verses. But Moses' father-in-law, who's a man named Jethro, and he is, it says in, in Exodus 18.1 that he had heard right, about everything that God had done. And Moses had sent his wife and his sons down to stay with them while he was in the midst of, of, of leading the people out of Egypt and into the wilderness. And so his father-in-law comes to him and he, his wife and his sons come back. And it says in verse 5 that Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came to visit with Moses in the wilderness. He brought Moses' wife and his two sons with him. And they arrived while Moses and the people were camped near the mountain of God. Jethro had sent a message to Moses saying, I, Jethro, your father-in-law, am coming to see you and your, with, with your wife and your two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. He bowed low and kissed him. Now, I am so glad that customs have changed over the years, all right? I've been married to set for 17 years to Laura. I just also want to just pause and say thank you to her uh, for running my slides and keeping me organized. Um, she's amazing. Uh, we, we've been married a little over 17 years and uh, love every second of it. But I have never kissed my father-in-law. So let me get that on the record, all right? Thankful for that. But in this day and age, Culturally appropriate. So he bows low. All of us have never bowed low before him either. They asked about each other's welfare and they went into Moses' tent. Now notice verse 8. Moses told his father-in-law everything that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and Egypt on behalf of Israel. He told all about the hardships that they had experienced along the way. And how the Lord had rescued his people from all their troubles. Verse 9. Jethro was delighted when he heard about all the good things that the Lord had done for Israel as he rescued them from the hand of the Egyptians. Now, I just want to pause there for a second and notice something. It says that, that, that Moses was telling his father-in-law about the hardships, about the, the difficulties that they had been allowed to go through. But then he said, I also, he also told him about how the Lord had rescued his people from all of their troubles. Right, that, that he was able to recount, yes, God allowed us to go through difficult situations. God allowed us to feel overwhelmed at times. God allowed us to be in, in, in places where we had to absolutely and utterly depend on him. But he was faithful in all of those places. He was faithful to his promises. He was faithful to his people. And he rescued us. 
And you know, hardships, difficulties, we may not understand them or like them. Right? I don't. But I know that God works in them and he works through them. Notice verse 10. Jethro says, Praise the Lord. For he has rescued you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Yes, he has rescued Israel from the powerful hand of Egypt. Notice verse 11. I know now that the Lord is greater than all the other gods because he has rescued his people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. Now, we, we are introduced to Jethro as a priest earlier. He certainly has some sort of faith and belief in God. But through hearing what God has done, in Moses, through Moses, his son-in-law, what he has done on behalf of the Hebrew people. Jethro said, I came to a place where I know the Lord in a different way, and I know his power in a different way, and I have a deeper confidence that he really is the God of creation, that he really is the God who is above all other gods. And so God used even what Moses went through in the people of Israel to build faith in others. And God was working. Notice verse 12. Then Jethro, Moses' his father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. He worshipped God. And Aaron and all the elders of Israel came out and joined him in a sacrificial meal in God's presence. The next day, Moses took his seat to hear the people's disputes against each other. And they waited before him from morning till evening. So they have this wonderful reunion Right, Moses is reunited, not just with his father-in-law, but with his wife and his sons. They recount all of the ways that God has been good and faithful despite the hardships, despite the difficulties. There's a celebration that even these things have raised their level of faith and confidence in God. They have a time of worship and a meal together. And then Moses has to kind of get back to his duties. And now his duties have become consumed with helping everyone with their problems, right? And so it says that Moses sits down and he solves everybody's problems. He listens to their disputes. And he says from, from, from sun up to sundown, Moses is just doing nothing but arbitrating people's problems, their disagreements. And verse 14, verse 14 says, When Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked this, what are you really accomplishing here? Right? Have you ever asked that question? Maybe of yourself? Right? What am I really doing? What am I really accomplishing? And so Moses' father-in-law is going to speak into his life. Right? Moses' father-in-law is going to look at Moses in the situation, and he says, wow, Moses, I am so proud of you. Man, God has... God has grown you. I, I see such an amazing difference in you from when you were taking care of my sheep and, and, and you, were, you were just not really doing anything for God, but now you have grown in your faith and you, God is at work and my faith has grown. But Moses, let me speak into your life. And so he asked him a question. What are you really accomplishing here? Why are you trying to do all of this alone while everyone stands around you from morning till evening? He says, Moses... You're putting all of this burden on yourself, and it's too much. Verse 15, Moses replied, because the people come to me to get a ruling from God. I'm the one who hears from God. I'm the one who represents God, and so I have to do this. When a dispute, verse 16, arises, they come to me, and I am the one who settles the case between the quarreling parties. I inform the people of God's decrees and give them his instructions. Now that sounds really noble, doesn't it? Moses is like, man, I've, I've got to do this. I've got to carry all this burden because I'm the one who, who, who goes before God and, and seeks the wisdom and will of God and I have to hear all these problems and I have to deal with all these situations. J Jethro, I, dad-in-law, I've got to do this. Right? This is important. This is, this is what I have to do. And so he's sort of explaining and justifying his situation. And notice verse 17, what, what Jethro says. This is not good. He says, Moses, this is not good. This, this is not a sustainable way to live. And you're putting too much burden on yourself. You're not the savior of these people. Verse 18, he says, you're going to wear yourself out and the people too. This job is too heavy of a burden for you to handle all by yourself. Listen, you're not made to handle everything by yourself. You know, sometimes we get, 
a, 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 in a situations where we feel like I've got to take care of this and I've got to hold my family together and I've got to protect this situation and I've got to help this or I've got to do that and we put all this weight on ourselves. and yes God uses us and yes God calls us to things and even difficult things but he's not called you to be anyone's savior he's not called you to be God he's only called you to be faithful to him and so Jethro is trying to point Moses to truth Notice verse 19. He says, now listen to me. Moses, I want you to listen to what I have to say. Let me give you a word of advice. Let me speak into your life. Listen, even though Moses knew God and had grown in his faith and was the leader of the Hebrew people, of, of potentially millions of people, he still needed advice. He didn't know everything. We all have blind spots in life. Right? We all have blind spots. How many of you drive? All right. Wow. All right. That's scary. All right. <laughs> Terrifying, actually. But if you have ever merged on a highway from one lane to the other, what is one thing you should always do? Check your blind spot, right? Because there's a place. Yes, you can glance in your mirror, right? And you can look in the rear of your mirror. You can glance in the side of the mirror. Don't stay there. You've got to look forward, too. Are you, are you with me? Right? But if you don't take a look at your blind spot, there's a place where the mirrors don't cover, right? And there's almost always what? A car there. And if you don't check your blind spot and you merge, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And it's the same way in life. We all have blind spots, right? There's things that I don't see about myself. Now, there's a lot I know about myself. I'm aware of my weaknesses and my problems and my failures and like all of us are. But there's oftentimes things that I don't see. And I need people to speak into those areas. And so do you. And so did Moses. So Jethro says, listen to me. Let me give you a word of advice. And may God be with you. You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. He says, Moses, you're not wrong to, to have this role, but you need to do something. Look, notice verse 20. Teach them God's decrees. Right? Teach the people what God says. Give them his instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives. Right? You are to be the teacher. You are to point them to the truth. But select, verse 21, from all the people, some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. Appoint them as leaders over groups of 1,000, 100, 50, and 10. And so he says, you've got to organize some things here, Moses. You've got to delegate some things. You've got to get some things off your plate and empower and enable other capable leaders to do this. Verse 22, they should always be available to solve the people's common disputes, but have them bring the major cases to you. Let the leaders decide the smaller matters for themselves. They will help you carry the load, making the task easier. Again, God is not asking you to carry everyone's load. Right? We are to bear each other's burdens. We are to care for each other. But you were not designed nor made to carry everyone's load. Verse 23. If you follow this advice, and if God commands you to do so, hold that thought there because we're going to come back to that. Very key in verse 23. Then you will be able to endure the pressures and all these people will go home in peace. Now here's the key, verse 24. Moses listened to his father-in-law's advice and followed his suggestions. The following verses will tell us how he selected capable men and he pointed them. But, but notice verse 24, if you're, if you're looking at it. He listened. Right? He listened to his father-in-law's advice and he followed his suggestions. I think it's pretty amazing that Moses did not allow pride and ego and stubbornness to keep him from listening. Because it, it might have been easy to say, I hear what you're saying, but, but I'm the leader here. I'm the smart person here. I'm the one who knows everything. I'm going to just keep doing it the way I'm doing it. But instead, he chose to listen to his father-in-law's advice. I want to give you, I want to give you three things uh, that come from, I think, principles from this passage. Because we're all going to face situations in life where we need wise advice. And if we're going to follow God's call in our life and live faithfully for Him, we are going to need to listen to advice. So number one, be willing to listen to godly advice. Be willing to listen to godly advice. Now, 
Always consider the source, right? If somebody's giving you advice, you want to say, do I see in this person the kind of characteristics of, of wisdom? Do they love God? Do they, do they believe his word, right? I, I want to say, is, is the source of this advice good, right? Moses had a wise and faith-filled father-in-law, right? It's established in the text that, that, that Jethro was a, a believer and a worshiper of God. Right? And he was also a man that had accrued wisdom along the way of life. And so be willing to listen to wise advice. Be careful with the source. And then get a second opinion. You know, if it's a big decision, now if it's just like picking out your outfit, one opinion's fine, all right? Are you with me? But if it's a big life decision, and you go to someone for advice, and you're trying to wrestle with, is this good advice? Is this advice I should follow? And you're not sure, get, get another opinion. You know, I was in a very difficult situation seven years ago. I had to make a very, very painful choice as far as my ministry and the church I was serving at. And I, I did not know what to do. I really didn't. I'd never been in a situation like that, never thought I would be in a situation like that, and I didn't know what to do. And so I had to seek advice. And by God's grace, I was able to talk to seven or eight different people some of them who knew me, some of them who didn't even know me, but God put them in touch with me. And all of them told me almost exactly the same thing. And so there was a confidence to say, this advice is coming from godly people who I know care about me, and they're all telling me the same thing. And that gave me confidence to say, I think this is what I need to do to make this decision. Number two, be sure to filter the advice you've been given. And I've already kind of alluded to this, but be sure to filter the advice. Right? As, as, as I'm receiving advice, I always want to, to receive it prayerfully. Right? I want to pray about the advice that I've been given. God, is this, is this good advice? Give me wisdom to know if I should listen to this. In fact, that's what, remember, Jethro advised. Remember back in verse 23? Right? When Jethro says, now listen to me and, and do this, and he says, if, if God wills that or if God confirms that. Even Jethro said, look, I'm giving you the advice that I think you really need. But I'm not God. I'm not infallible. I'm not perfect either. So I'm giving you this advice because I sense and believe this is what God wants me to say to you. But you pray about it and seek the Lord's confirmation. So filter advice through prayer. Filter advice through God's word. Right? If somebody gives you advice and you say, man, they seemed really sincere and I think they really care about me, but what they told me to do goes directly against what God said well, then we don't want to listen to that advice, right? Filter it through the truth of God's Word. And then ask yourself, does this seem wise? Is what I'm being told, does it seem wise? Based on the wisdom that I've experienced and God's Word, right? Does this seem wise? Because some people have biases, right? You know, there are going to be people who give you advice, but they're giving you advice because they want you to do something that will benefit them. And so your response to their advice impacts their life, and so they, they are biased. Be careful about your own confirmation bias. Right? We tend to believe things that we already agree with. And so when I hear something that I already agree with, I tend to think it's true. And so I have to be careful with my own bias to say, do I, do I think this is true just because I agree with it, or is it true because it's really true? Be sure to filter the advice you be given. Number three, be humble enough to implement wise advice. It takes humility, doesn't it? It takes humility to say, I needed advice. But be humble enough to implement wise advice. Proverbs 13, 13 and 14 says, People who despise advice are asking for trouble. Those who respect a command will succeed. The instruction of the wise is like a life-giving fountain. And those who accept it avoid the snares of death. Right? We have to humble ourselves and recognize that we all, none of us, I mean absolutely no one in this room is an exception to the rule of needing advice. You know, a lot of times in life we think we're the exception to the rule, don't we? Right? Yes, that rule is good for almost everybody, but I don't need that rule. Right? I'm the exception. I can get away with it. It won't affect me. I can handle this. But no one is the exception to the rule. 
If we are foolish and despise advice, we're asking for trouble. We're going to bring extra trouble. Listen, you're going to have enough trouble in life, enough difficulties that God allows. Don't bring extra trouble into your life by not listening to wise advice. We never outgrow it. Moses needed God's advice that came through Jethro, his wisdom. God is going to bring wisdom to you through other people. And so I want to ask you this morning a question. Is there an area of your life that you are resisting wisdom in? Is there an area of a life that, that someone has spoken into you? Or is there an area that God has spoken to you through His Word or through His Spirit? And you're resisting. You, you know God's calling you to do something. You know there's something He's asking you to do. A sin to leave, a habit to let go a choice to make, a step forward? And are you resisting that? And is pride possibly in the way? Proverbs 11 verse 2 says, When pride comes, then disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. And I have, you can see this on the pages of Scripture, in the characters and the people that God has revealed in His Word. I've watched it play out in my own life, but in the lives of others. And sometimes it's so awful to watch someone who's filled with pride and you just know they're going down a destructive path and they think they're getting away with it and they think it'll never catch up to them, but it always does. And so there's pride. I'm just asking you to deal with that pride and to humble yourself before God and to admit your need of Him and to admit your need to listen to others. I, I, want, I want all of you to, to know the love of God that's available to you in Christ. I want all of you to know that He loves you so, so very much. Right? He loves you so much that He gave His Son for you. And He's called you to Himself. And He's called you to follow Him and to serve Him. And God has raised you up for this, this generation. It's a difficult world that we live in. There's turmoil and difficulty and suffering and evil and all these things that rage in our world. But God has called you to be His ambassadors, to announce and represent His kingdom, His goodness, His grace, His mercy, His love, the eternity that He offers to everyone. And I want you to embrace that call on your life. He is worthy of that call. And I want to challenge you to give God your yes. And part of that includes being willing to listen to advice. I appreciated God's timing last night uh, at the recital. Uh, as you got to hear uh, from uh, Dr. Harding a little bit about a man named Sam Shu, who was an integral part of this, this ministry, who was, uh, who was a teacher, I believe a dean here. And when I was a camper my first year, 1995, right, my counselor invited Sam Shu to come to our devotional group. He was an amazingly talented man, gifted. It was, I mean, just to watch him play the piano was an indescribable gift. But he came to our devotional group and he shared a verse. And it's one of those moments that, and I believe it might have been even somewhere in this building, in, in a hallway somewhere here in a classroom. And I can see that moment so clear. And he shared with us Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And I want to leave you with this verse this morning. It says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. If you will choose to live that way, to seek Him, to do justly, to do what's right, to love mercy, to love God's mercy for you, and to love the fact that He is merciful for, to others, and then to walk humbly with Him. If you'll walk humbly with Him, God will see to it that He will use your life for His purposes, for His glory. And I can promise you this, nothing is better than that. He is worthy. And one day, sooner than you think, you will see Him face to face. And in that moment, it will have been worth it all. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much uh, for the privilege that we've had to be together this week and for some of us these last two weeks. What a blessing that you've given us after such a difficult season of separation. And Father, I thank you for the gift of, of friendships and relationships and all the goodness that you've poured out. I thank you for the growth that's taken place, Father, spiritually, in music, relationally. 
Father, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. But I just pray a blessing over each person here, our faculty, our staff, our counselors, our incredible love for them and the freedom and the forgiveness that you offer them in Christ. And I pray that in whatever situation or station that they are in life, that they would say yes to your call and seek to pursue and follow you with everything that they have and everything that they are. And Father, I pray that you would help us to be willing to listen. Father, it's so easy to think that we have all the answers or we're the smartest person or we know everything. But Father, we don't. So help us when you bring wise advice into our life, whether it's through your word or through a person. Father, help us to listen, to consider, to seek if you're speaking to us. And if you are, help us to be humble enough to implement that so that we can stay on course and serve you well. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This is uh, especially for those who are here all summer. This is Pastor Dan's last chapel. Can you all thank him for the work he's doing?